Wa. Hey, much love and respect. Pura vida, mi gente. Thanks for uh, tuning in once again. Real quick video. We're going to go over some information I've gone over in old videos, but never in its own video. Just wanted to point this out about the Lucayans, right? How they were being used as so-called slaves. Just going to show you guys some historic examples. I'm also going to show you from primary sources the uh, physical descriptions of the Lucayans from these early uh, colonists. The reason I'm doing this is because their story was eventually forgotten and it became the story of so-called African slaves when in this case it was the Lucayans. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to start in this book it says here Old Panama and Castillo del Oro. All right and this is by Dr. C.L.G. Anderson. This is from 1911 and it says here on page 50 of this book in regards to the physical description of these people and this is from primary sources right it says the aboriginal people of the bahamas the lucayans discovered by columbus were a tall graceful dark-skinned race or again a dark-skinned race of barbarians dash to hijack they were gentle and loving quite unlike their cousins on the mainland so why are you calling them barbarians if they're gentle and loving they're not like their fierce neighbors to the south the Caribs, who dwelt in the Lesser Antilles. They possessed pottery and stone implements like Celts, arrowheads, mortars, and pestles, and were expert in the use of their canoas, canoes. Columbus well described them. All of them go as naked as they came into the world. Their forms are graceful, their features good, their hair as coarse, coarse hair, right, as a horse tail, cut short in front and worn long upon their shoulders. They are dark of complexion, okay? Again, dark of complexion and dark skin, like the Canary Islanders, and paint themselves in various colors. They do not carry arms and have no knowledge of them, for when I showed them our sword, they took them by the edges and through their ignorance cut themselves. Neither have they any iron. Their spears consist of staffs tipped with stone and dogfish teeth. I swear to your majesties, there are no better people on earth they are gentle without knowing what evil is neither killing nor stealing all right these gentle loving people listen to what columbus primary sources all right describing them as dark complexion dark-skinned people okay nobody is blackwashing here that's just history that's just the truth such were the timid innocent aborigines of the bahamas living in an eden like simplicity all right they will live in what like an eden and happiness in their island homes. They were in peace. They were living good before the Spaniards got there. 20 years later, guess what happened? When the Spaniards had exterminated nearly all the natives of Hispaniola, they stole away the Lucayans to the number of 40,000 to slave in the mines and on the plantations of Hispaniola. And in about 50 years, these people became extinct. All right, so dodged a hijack. Now, this is very important because they told us always growing up that when they uh, depleted the native population of Hispaniola because they were bad workers, they couldn't, you know, work like the so-called Negroes, they went and got Africans. That's what they told us. But look at what it says here. They took 40,000 Lucayans to replenish Haiti slave population. Lucayans, not Africans, guys. This is big right here. Wake up. So again, we got these dark skin, dark complexion, Lucayan, American Indians, right? Indigenous, what they call here, Aboriginal people being enslaved, all right? So again, they didn't go to Africa to get uh, more slaves to replenish Haiti. We got many accounts of many different Indian nations, American Indian nations being taken to Hispaniola as slaves. And also, the so-called black Latinos as auxiliaries, these black Spaniards, Sephardic Jews, a lot of these people got caught up in that too and were being sent to the plantations. So there you go, so-called black Indians correlating with all the other sources we got about the people of the Americas. We had every phenotype here, every type of hair, and every shade of copper complexion from the lightest copper to the darkest copper, so-called Negro. All right. 
we're going to go read another book now. We're going to show you how the Lucayans, not only were they taken to Haiti as slaves, but they were also being used as pearl diving slaves. They were very expert in pearl diving, and they were being sent to Venezuela and South America and different parts to, uh, you know, get pearls f for the uh, colonists. And again, they told us in history that it was Africans they were bringing to do that. But that was a lie. As you guys will see, let's go ahead and go to that book right now. So, so let's see here, the book of the pearl, the history, art, science, and industry of the Queen of Gems by George Frederick Kuntz, PhD, Charles Hugh Stevenson. So New York, this is written in 1908. Continuing the book, it says, this expedition of Pedro Alonso Nino was the first financially profitable voyage to America. The Cubagua pearl fishery in Venezuela became the object of numerous speculations and many other Spaniards fitted out voyages, most of them sailing from Hispaniola or Haiti, 900 miles distant. Owing to the ill treatment of the Indians and excessive cruelties towards them, much difficulty was experienced in securing divers. This was relieved in 1508, I listened to this, by transporting large numbers of Indians from Lucayan or Bahama Islands and impressing them into the service. So how did they get their pearl divers? They got them from Lu the Lucayan or the Bahama Islands, all right? They had to go get other Indians from the Lucayan and Bahama Islands, not Africans, other Indians. These were so expert, we're talking about the Lucayan or Bahama Island people or Indians. These were so expert in the work, we're talking about pearl diving, that individuals sold for upward of 150 ducats each because they were so valuable at pearl diving. With their aid, the fishery prospered so greatly that in 1515, a settlement called New Cadiz was established on Cubagua Island by the governor of Hispaniola, Diego Columbus, son of the discoverer. You hear this? His son got in the pearl business. All right, Columbus. This small island was dry and desolate, without water or wood, which were brought from the mainland, 20 miles distant from Margarita Island, about three miles to the northward. The cupidity of the proprietors of the fishery led to the most cruel treatment of the divers, and if the accounts of the time are to be relied upon, a large percentage of them died under the harsh regimen. About 1515, the unfortunate natives obtained an earnest and influential advocate in Bartolomo de las Casas, who in 1516 prevailed upon the youthful Charles V to decree that the fishery should be prosecuted only in summer, that the divers should not be required to work more than four hours a day, where the deaths exceeded six phantoms, that they should receive good nourishment, a happy quart of wine daily, should have hammocks or beds in which to sleep, and should be provided with clothes to put on as soon as they left the water. And by later ordinances, it was stipulated that death should be inflicted on anyone forcing a free Indian to die for pearls. All right? It was Indians, not Africans. Oh.